Hey, I'm Pat Keegan and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. Today, as promised, it's Open Shop Friday and as I mentioned in our intro video, if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch the intro video. Um, I talk extensively about a great book that, um, that really resonated with me. Uh, it's called Two Second Lean and in the spirit of making things better here in the shop, I've decided to make a rolling mobile shop cart that's going to be able to be used as a bench to hold all the things that I need when I'm accessing my furniture pieces over here as well as going to have some drawers. Now I told you in the intro video that I'm just kind of winging it and that's kind of the spirit of the Open Shop Friday. Um, you know sometimes it's just good to be creative and get out there and kind of mess around and do stuff and that's kind of what we're going to do. So I'm keeping my cuts to a minimum, I'm keeping my um, you know drawings and plans to a minimum um, but I did kind of want to go over with you so I created this you know handy little chart I just drew it up about five minutes ago and I just want to walk you through it a little bit here and this is basically what we're going to be making I'm going to be using some eight foot um, you know sheets of plywood that are, are already cut to be 24 inches wide and I'm going to have about seven or eight pieces I'm going to have a top and a bottom and then a back which you can't see here on the drawing and then one two three four five partitions the two end partitions and then the three in the middle and those are going to be able to uh, be used to create the four bays that I'm going to have and in these bays I'm going to put um, three drawers each potentially I may leave these last two bays blank because maybe I'll put the compressor in there I'm not sure um, but any anyway uh, for this part of the drawing this just kind of gives you the rough dimension as I said the box itself is going to be 32 inches I'm going to put four inch rolling casters or rolling wheels on these for a total height of 36 inches and then the whole thing is just going to be used um, we're going to use the whole sheet of the plywood here for the top and the bottom basically ripping it in half and to make it 96 um, each of the partitions um, is going to be 23 and a quarter inches wide and 30 and a quarter, 30 and a half inches tall. And that 30 and a half inches plus the three quarter for the top and the bottom will give me the 32 inches that I need. And um, I've got most of these pieces cut already. And as you can see here, with the um, setup that I have, um, I mentioned in the intro video again that that this is one of the things that bugs me. Um, again, I had to clean everything off of it and move it the other day, so it was just an inordinate waste of time for me. And so I'm really looking forward to having this mobile cart so I can just wheel it out of the way um, when I need to and adjust it as I need. And as you can kind of see here with the camera, it's resting on a couple of sawhorses. Um, and I don't have a lot of room for storage underneath because it's sitting on the floor, so I keep buckets and toolboxes and things under there. So that's all going to change. And I'm just going to build everything I need right here. I've got a bunch of pieces that are already cut. I've got the two 24 inch wide by 96 inch long sheets that are going to be the top and the bottom. The back piece is going to be 30 and a half by 96. I've already got that piece cut and you've seen me cut on the table saw many times so I'm really not going to go over that in this video. Um, if you want to see some of that and how we do that you can watch the kitchen cabinet series that I've already posted and these are already cut to 23 and a quarter by 30 and a half. And what we need to do now is each one of these partitions is going to be screwed into the back wall of this rolling cart and the bottom plate and the top plate. And so I'm going to drill a series of pocket holes along the top, the back edge, and the bottom edge. And I'll do that now. I'll go and get the um, Craig jig set up that you've seen me use a number of times and we'll get some of these pocket holes drilled. Okay, as you can see, I have the pocket hole jig um, already mounted to the table here and, and held in place with some clamps. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill some pocket holes along the bottom, the back, and the top edge in order to anchor it to the bottom platform, the back piece, and the top flat platform of the cart. Um, I always get asked the question, how many holes do you want or do we need drilled to make it absolutely secure? I, you know. You can probably put a minimum of three or four in there, but I, I probably will put about five here, maybe five to six along the back. It's overkill, I know, I've said this before. Um, there's a lot of people who say, ah, oh, you only need a screw every you know, foot or something like that. You know, I just like to be secure and careful because not every pocket screw goes in 100%. So 
Um, sometimes they spin if they hit a, um, a knot in the plywood or a hole or a gap inside the plywood um, substrate. So you want to at least put about five around on each edge. That, that should be way more than plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these up and then we'll start putting uh, the cart together already. Okay, I've got all the pocket holes drilled in all five partition pieces that I need. The two end panels and the three internal partitions that I'm going to be using. Now, what I had forgotten, but that's okay because this is Open Shop Friday and we're just winging it, is that um, these panels uh, of the pre-finished maple plywood that I'm using right now, which is just I have a ton of this stuff left over because I usually buy a lot because I use it all the time, um, the actual length of the plywood is, is 96 and a half inches. So um, what I'm going to do is figure out very quickly what the math is um, to do these partitions. And you can put your partitions anywhere you want to within. You can make some narrow, some wider drawers if you want. You know, I'm just a symmetrical guy, so I just want to make sure I put, you know, have four equal bays in which I'm going to be putting everything. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this assembly, and if you've watched our cabinet videos, um, you, you probably know this already, is I'm going to align the front of the cabinet toward me. I've got my right angle clamp um, uh, holding the side piece on. It's flush in the front, and the holes are toward the back, the top, and the bottom. So I have this, this front face which has no holes in it. And it's also flush along this outside edge back here, which you can't see because of the camera angle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the end pieces first, and then I'm going to attach the individual partitions. And again, if you guys know that um, I'm a huge fan of spacer blocks, so I, I'm going to do my math and then cut my spacer block. If I've got 96 and a half inches of total um, plywood surface on this uh, on this top of the cabinet piece that means when I put my two end caps on they're three quarters of an inch each wide so two of them would be an inch and a half so if I'm 96 and a half long I have to subtract that inch and a half of thickness that's going to be eaten up by the two end panels that's going to leave me with a 95 inch um, interior depth now I'm going to have three partitions in there so that's two and a quarter inches and I'm gonna take that two and a quarter inches because I've got three times three quarter so two and a quarter inches is gonna be taken up by the taken up by the interior partitions so I'm gonna subtract that two and a quarter inches from the 95 and that's gonna give me very quickly 95 minus two and a quarter that's gonna give me 92 and three quarter inches of interior space now I want four bays, so I'm going to divide that 92 and 3 quarter by 4, and that means that each bay is going to be 23 and 3 sixteenths. And you can work out the math, and I'll, I'll, I plan on posting a schematic once I'm done. I'll actually do the schematic in Google SketchUp, and you can see. Yours may be different. You may opt for a shorter piece of, of board. You may build it half this size. You may get plywood that's actually 96 inches and not 96 and a half. So you just have to adjust accordingly. But I've been doing this for a long time. So for me, you know, taking up inch and a half, multiplying two and a quarter, subtracting and getting my dimensions is, is actually fairly simple for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a spacer block that's exactly 23 and 3 sixteenths. And once I anchor this end panel, then I'm just going to put the spacer block in place and set the next panel so that I can set it in place. And I'll clamp it to the surface and I'll have the right distance for each of the bays. So I'm going to go ahead and attach these with some pocket screws to the um, underside of the top of the cabinet. And then once that's done, we'll put the bottom of the cabinet on, which will be at the top at this point and then we'll be ready to flip it over and put the back on.
Okay, just remember when you put on the end panels that uh, for the interior partitions, it doesn't matter which way the screws face, as long as uh, the pocket holes face, as long as the front side does not have the um, pocket holes in them because you want the pocket holes to be able to anchor the back. For this end panel here, you just make sure that the screws are facing or the screw holes, pocket holes, are facing toward the inside of the cabinet. As you can see, I've got the right angle clamp in place. I'm just using this as a spacer block to, cover, to hold against there so it doesn't slip off the edge. And I'm going to put it down in the base of the cabinet. Okay, I've got all five, two end panels and three interior partitions. I've got all five panels in place and now it's time to set the bottom. So I'm just going to lift this piece up here and set it in. And I've got a lot of support, but what I really want to do is make sure that I get the two end panels screwed in um, upside down and then what I'm going to do is flip it over and screw the rest of the panels in from the bottom so that I can it's a pain to hold a spacer block up here while you're trying to screw the thing in so it just doesn't work so I just want to be able to get the the top piece on here or the to either end and then I'll flip the whole thing over and then we'll put these middle partitions in and then we'll flip it over again on its on its face and we'll put the back on Okay, I've actually flipped the cabinet um, upside down now so that I can use the spacer block um, actually on the bottom here. And I'll start in this cavity and just do exactly, repeat the process that I used to anchor the top of the cabinet um, to each of these uh, partitions. So I'm just going to flush it up on this side and hold the spacer block and then drive the screws in. Okay, what I have now is the casework is now lying on its front. So I have my son and helper over here who's going to help me lift the back piece into place. And once it's in place, you know, again, this is Open Shop Friday. Sometimes we don't think all these things through. What I realize is once I put the back on this, it might be easier to actually drill through the, the top part of the back into the sides and the interior um, partitions but I don't really like that I don't want screw holes on the outside I just kind of want everything you know nice that's just the way I do it so um, but when we set it in we're gonna have some amount of difficulty getting into the cabinet from underneath but there's enough room on this table if we slide it over to the edge a little bit it's still taking the weight on this end um, you can also put another sawhorse under the corners to make sure that the thing is not going to tip on you if you happen to go up inside the box um, and we definitely don't want that. So I'm going to lift the back into place, set it in, and then uh, we're just going to attach the back directly with all of these pocket holes um, the same way we did all of the other ones. Okay, ready? Yeah. Lift and set. Now when you set this in, this is going to probably stick out. We're going to have to kind of pound it down because it's, a t it's probably going to be a little bit of a tight fit. Awesome. All right, and before I attach everything, anything or any of the screws, I am going to um, align it so that the edge of the back here is flush to the sides, and then I'm also going to um, take a tape measure and I measure each diagonal to try to square up the case. It should be pretty square, but in case it's not, I'm going to put a clamp on it to make sure that it's in square. And the way we do that is I'm going to take a tape measure from one end down to the diagonal of the other end and then up at, at this end and down to the diagonal at the other end. And if those two measures from diagonal to diagonal, if those two measurements are exactly equal, then I know that the casework is square. Okay, now that I've got 
Um, the back secured, the top and the bottom secured, and all the partitions secured with their pocket hole screws. I'm going to actually put on the wheels just because I'm excited and I want to put on the wheels. Now, you can actually install all your drawer hardware first and go cut those pieces and get that all done. But remember, this is Open Shop Friday and we're just kind of winging it, having fun. And so, again, it doesn't have to be very precise. Um, I've got a couple of wheels here that I'm going to put on. Now, each of these wheels is rated for 175 pounds. They're three inch wheels, but uh, the total distance between the top of the wheel plate and the bottom of the wheel is four inches. So the 32 inch box combined with the four inch wheel will give me the 36 inch height that I need. And I may actually even put a, a sheet of half inch um, MDF on there just to protect it that I can change out over time because I probably will end up using it as somewhat of a workbench. Again, this stuff doesn't have to be really precise. Um, but what I'm going to do is, you know, mount the wheels um, in such a way here like so. And all I want, I don't want them really right on the edge of the, of the piece. I want them about an inch in um, from this edge and an inch down from the top here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take a Sharpie marker. Pencil doesn't mark really great on the, um, you know, pre-finished plywood. But I'm just going to basically hold it flush with the edge and just draw a line here and hold it flush from the edge at the top and draw a line there. And so then I know when I want to go put attach the wheels here that I just make the corners, make the two lines parallel and you know I can go ahead and hold it there myself and just make a couple of marks uh, you know for some for some drilling out of these holes. Now I want to put uh, bolts in there without a lot of blocking underneath this so I've got to find some three-quarter inch bolts that I can put on and with this roughly 16th to an eighth inch plate it's gonna be okay the other thing I did was um, I got la locking casters for this one so that it's not gonna move and roll on me while I'm trying to work on it and I'm basically gonna to try to put six wheels on this two on each corners at each end and then two in the middle um, they're about 175 pound caster weight each so six should probably be plenty although by now this piece is is probably pretty heavy probably north of uh, 150 pounds or something like that I forget what the plywood weighs but um, it, it should be pretty heavy but with enough wheels on there it should roll just fine and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the right screws here and then we'll attach the wheels and then I'll flip it under and we'll start working on the or flip it over rather and we'll start working on all the drawers Okay, since the last clip of this video, um, I actually went out and got di slightly different wheels than I had before. I was short two wheels of the ones that I showed you in the previous video, and so I was at the store and I happened to pick these up. Um, I actually like these a little bit better because they have a really solid brake, um, brake foot on them so that you can step on it very easily. And so what I've done is I basically took my ruler and just, you know, draw an outline, drew an outline here, put these up and as you saw in the last video trace the holes and so now what I do is I do a couple things I want to drill a pilot hole into each of these holes for all the wheels simply because it's easier to you know drive the screw in there and it doesn't and, and I'm going to be driving some pretty heavy screws so I think a pilot pilot uh, hole is warranted the next thing I like to do is I, I like to take this um, scratch all and um, it's just a looks like a screwdriver with a point on it um, they have automatic ones, actually spring-loaded ones, which are pretty cool. Um, but again, a couple bucks or whatever, and um, you can go buy drill bits with brad points on them too. That that helps the drill bit from wandering. But basically, that's partly what the what the awl does. Is when I have these holes here, I just find roughly where the center of my marking is, and I just push in a little bit with some pressure and make an indentation for the drill bit to sit in. Um, so that it doesn't wander uh, as I'm drilling the hole. Now, I don't want to drill holes to receive the screws that are going to hold these caster wheels on all the way through the plywood, although I could because it's, there's going to be drawers in there so it won't matter, but you know, it's just habits. Um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and put a piece of blue tape um, just to the depth, and what I usually do is I take the screw or the um, the drill bit and I make sure that I'm not going to pierce 
um, the other side of this uh, uh, piece of board here. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll use that point to mark with a piece of blue tape. And now I know that if I just drill up to that little piece of blue tape that I have here, that I'm not going to go through the, the wood. It's just a little trick that I use. There's other ways of doing it, of course. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill the pilot holes for this one. Okay, and then what I've got is just some number 12, um, you know, three quarter inch screws. They're about number 12 thickness. I would have gotten number 14, but I didn't have any with me. So, um, and I just put a little bit of a washer on there. The head of the screw was actually wide enough to grab onto the, um, to the edge of the holes that are on this caster, but you know, it's just a, a little bit of overkill, I guess, doesn't hurt. Um, so I just put a little bit of a washer on there and I go ahead and put that in there. Actually, I'll put it in the screwdriver first. And yes, I'm manually driving these in, not, not mechanical. Sometimes I just like to manually do it. So I'm just going to put these in and I'll adjust them in just a second. It's probably boring for you to sit here and watch me turn a screwdriver here. So I'm just going to put a couple in here and then we'll talk about it for just a second. All right, so I just want to kind of line it up with the lines that I had before. Again, it's not, you know, hypercritical that you get that 100% right. Um, all right, so I got two screws in. That's enough to hold the wheel. I'm going to go ahead and do all the other five wheels, um, and then we'll set it on the two sawhorses, um, not so that they're on the wheels, <laughs> but uh, and then we'll start looking at putting in some drawers in a couple of these cavities. Well, as you can see, the shop cart is coming together. I've got all the wheels attached here on the underside of the rolling shop cart. And right now I have it setting up on the two sawhorses so that I'll be able to attach the drawer slides for the drawers that we're going to make um, and, the, and the actual drawers themselves. We're going to do that in the next video segment. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little bit shorter in length. So I'll have a part two of two for this video of the rolling shop cart. I'm going to attach the drawer slides in the next video using a slightly different method, but nothing that you haven't seen already. I really prefer the spacer block method, although I showed you the story stick or story pole method. If you've watched the kitchen video series, I've shown you how to do that. This is going to be a little bit simpler. I'm going to cut some spacer blocks. I'll lay down a spacer block, attach a slide, use a spacer block, the next slide, a spacer block, the next slide. So in the next video segment, we'll talk about how to get this installed and how to make some very simple drawer boxes out of already the scrap plywood that we have. In this series, I'm not going to attach a face frame to this cabinet here simply because I want to get this as functional as possible as quickly as possible. And so the best way to do that is just to put the slides the way they might do on European cabinets where there are no face frames. I may come back later and just put a little piece of edge band in there to clean this up and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but again, it's a shop cabinet, so I'm not all that concerned about appearances. I'm really concerned about functionality. So we're going to put three drawers in each of these cubbies here, each of these spaces and we'll show you how to do that next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching and I enjoy your feedback and comments below. Please don't be shy and we'll see you then, thanks.